Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tiny Blue Games. My name is, of course, Seesaw or Chris, and today we're talking about Final Fantasy XIV in 2019. How's it going? Hopefully you guys are having a good start to your weekend. I'm really excited the weekend is here myself. Um, I am still sick, um, and I, I've been like not sick enough not to go to work, but like sick enough that each day of work felt like it took forever. Um, so I'm just really happy to get to the weekend, and I am feeling better, so I'm hoping that I'm able to just recover throughout the weekend. Um, I do have my tea beside me again, and hopefully my voice isn't too irritating. We've moved on kind of from like the plugged nose to like um, kind of a scratchy throat slash cough situation. Um, so you kind of get to hear the different stages of my illness through the recordings, which is just a magical journey, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, uh, the show must go on, as they say. So today we are going to talk about the rising event. Um, just before we do that, though, I do need to give a quick shout out to one of our viewers, um, as well as someone who is in my free company, because the most heartbreaking thing happened. Um, I was recording this and I was really focused on the cutscenes and the, um, the actual quest dialogue. Um, and I wasn't looking at my chat really at all. But throughout my chat, um, someone named Rurudi Fonzo was trying to get my attention um, through the free company chat. And I just, I, I was ignoring him because I just didn't see it um, until I got to the very end. And then I scrolled through all the messages and I, I went to go message and I was like, hey, how's it going? And he had already logged off. And I, I don't know, I just feel really bad about it. Um, they, they like assumed that I was probably busy doing something like this. Um, but it's just always sad to see. So hopefully I see you online again soon. Um, and hopefully you watch this video so you can sort of see this is, this is the video that I was making while you were trying to contact me. You might actually see some of your messages in the text box just because I can only do this, this event once. So I was like, I'm going with this footage. Um, and there you go, you made it a bit more unique that way. Um, but I do truly appreciate you trying to reach out to me. Any Anytime a viewer tries to contact me, um, you know, even if I am a, kind of a, a fool and don't message you back, it does mean a lot to me in the end. Um, that goes the same with emails and stuff like that. Even if you've sent me an email and I haven't replied, um, I do have a ton of comments and a ton of emails and stuff that come in, um, and I, I do eventually try to get back to them, uh, but I do sometimes take quite a while to get there, so do know that it means a lot to me, um, and that I will try and reply when I can. But yeah, let's talk about the event. Um, so. This is the Rising event. I actually, once again, didn't really know what was going on until a little bit later um, into the event. Uh, but this one was a lot quicker to do, um, at least initially. There is also sort of a component that you can repeat to get some uh, currency and stuff like that. I, I do like how they have kind of a, a shorter version of the event for people who are just trying to do it once and sort of see what it's like, and then a longer version of the event for people who are trying to collect things and uh, actually like try and really get every item that is um, available to them. So I, I do like that they do that in the first few events that I've tried. It'll be interesting if that's something that continues moving forward or not, uh, but I, I do enjoy that. The other thing I really enjoy is that this event sort of um, starts where the other one let off, which was the Moonfire Festival or Moonfire Fair. Um, and as you saw just in the very initial part there, we were on the beach um, cleaning up some of the garbage left by that festival, um, which is really cool because it, it makes the world feel so much more cohesive, right? Like, you know, all of a sudden there's actual things that happen after events in the game, right? Like, it's like, oh yeah, there's a big party. There's probably going to be some garbage that you need to pick up. So really cool. Um, and what ends up happening is we find a message in a bottle while we're cleaning it up. And the message sort of alludes to some sort of uh, dark catastrophic event, which the person we're picking it up for kind of thinks could be another calamity. Um, that that you know it, it's not exactly clear but she's like oh this could be a really important message so she sends us off to go and figure it out 
Um, it seems weird that it's such an important message that she doesn't want to go check it out and instead stays cleaning the beach. I, I feel like if it was kind of like, this could be the end of the world, maybe I would go as well. But, you know, that's that's my own, my own feelings towards that. Um, but it's okay, I'll steal credit for solving this. Um, so we go and bring the bottle to someone who can help us sort of um, understand more about what's written on it. Um, and, and just as some background information, if you are really new to it, like I am, like to the game, the Calamity is kind of the uh, launching of the Realm Reborn. It's kind of the thing that uh, destroyed the initial game as well as the initial world. Um, and it's what you sort of see as the cutscene when you uh, first start up the game. Um, I think it always defaults to that cutscene. Because I have Shadowbringers now and it still goes to that one. So that that's kind of the event um, that takes place. And they celebrate it each year. Which is really cool as well. I love games that make a festival of their launch. Um, you know which game I'm going to talk about again. But Maple Story has Maple Season each year. Um, and... You know, it's not as big of a thing for me. Well, it's it's just as big of a thing in game. Uh, but what was particularly exciting about it, like, you know, many, many years ago when it first launched, is that during that time, there was a small chance for maple weapons to drop from each of the monsters. And it was just during that month, and the maple weapons were actually very unique, and they sort of were themed off of the logo of the game. And you would try and get one during the month and they would be very valuable because you could only get them during that month. Um, they were also very valuable for different stat reasons, but that's kind of beyond the scope of me trying to explain Maple Story in a video. Uh, but yeah, all this to say, I love games that celebrate their launch. Uh, Guild Wars 2 would give you sort of a present, which is, it's cool, um, but I, I definitely like the actual event. And from what I understand, this one changes from year to year as well. Um, like quite drastically where you know some years it is kind of a quest some years it's kind of like an instance uh, so it is cool that they switch it up but yeah we eventually get taken to this bard who gives us kind of a vision um, and this vision is super cool I always love being out in this um, kind of nowhere's uh, no man's land uh, ether area and we you know, wind up meeting someone we don't expect to meet, which is ourselves. Um, and it's a very cool thing that they're able to do, because I guess because they use the same person for each of the jobs, it's really easy for them to just use our character model for uh, cutscenes like this, which I was actually, I was kind of like, wow, that's really cool when I was watching this, because I, I don't know if I've seen a game that has used my character model so effectively before. Um, and it really added a lot of impact to the video, um, or to the, to the cutscene, I should say, just being able to see everyone. And then this is the, I'm pretty sure this is the, uh, minstrel guy again, just with like some sexier glasses, um, who's talking to us. Uh, but yeah, so it was a, a very interesting quest, um, and the long and the short of it is that we end up finding out that the minstrel is the one who created these messages in the bottle. Um, and it was for the initial calamity that had launched the game. And what had happened is that he had um, sort of um, foresee foreseen the calamity and had gathered people to send out these messages in a bottle to try and warn as many people around the world as possible. Um, which is really cool, and I I didn't have time to look this up, and this is just me making a small guess, uh, but was that like an actual quest before the Calamity happened, where player characters would have to go and like bring materials for him to write messages in the bottle and stuff like that? Um, because A, if they did that, that's super cool, um, and B, like I, I could definitely see that being such a, a callback, right? Like that you, you know, many, many years ago went and made all these messages and sent them out. And now, you know, there was some that weren't uh, picked up. Cause I, I love games that do that too, that remember the roots um, and really bring back those, those uh, specific moments. And it's particularly good cause as a new player who's just finding this message, you know, hey, I believe that it's just an NPC who did this. But if I was a experienced player who had you know, wrote these messages in the bottle, it would, you know, have a whole nother layer of meaning for me that wouldn't necessarily take away from new players. 
and it's a really hard thing to do um, because I, I find that like Guild Wars 2 um, the entire Path of Fire expansion is kind of um, about nostalgia for Guild Wars 1 um, and they do it in a really good way for a lot of it but there are times as a player who didn't play Guild Wars 1 that you kind of feel like you miss out on some of the lore, on some of the little Easter eggs, um, just because you, you didn't play it. And it's, it's more the fact that they just do it for an entire length of an expansion. Um, whereas this, if there's the, the odd moment where there's callbacks to like, you know, a past game or very early on in the game that you might not have been there, it's not as big of a deal in my mind. So I do really like that they added that into here. I think that they um, made a really cool event and that it was once again a really nice pace. Um, this is actually one of the quest chains that I was the most focused in because I really, I, I don't know, I find it very exciting to deal with the initial launch with the Calamity. Like it's a very interesting piece of lore for the game and a very unique thing that Final Fantasy XIV has done. But yeah guys, hopefully you enjoy this event, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I had a lot of fun, I ended up getting my little minion as well, which is really cool. Um, and I don't know, I'm, I'm excited to see the other events that come on uh, or take place in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, hopefully I'm not sick for the next video. Um, and we can just hear my normal voice, which would be so good because at the end of this, my throat has gotten very sore. Um, and for that reason, you're only getting one take. I think I nailed it. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.